Hey, guess what? It's time for voiceover body shop. And our guest tonight is the one and only Debbie Derryberry. Hey. Hi. Wave, wave and say hi. If you got hi, a question, everybody. I know. If you got a question for Debbie Derryberry, throw it in the chat room in Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you're watching. You know, send it up as smoke signals. We'll get to those questions in a little while. And George and I will be right back and we'll have a great show. This is going to be fabulous. Stay tuned. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. <laughs> playing a fanfare now? <laughs> I hit the wrong dang button. It's supposed there to be this. BS. Okay. See, it's canned. We don't even have to say it anymore. We just let Jeff say it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we have to we have to forward Jeff's career a little bit because he's helping us out. <laughs> anyway, welcome well, uh, to our show. Uh, we're here to help you with your your voiceover career. And in order to do that, we bring you some of the top people in the business and we talk about tech and we talk about all sorts of stuff. But it's more important that you hear from the top people in the business who are really successful. And what is it that makes them successful? And our guest tonight is a voice that your kids probably know and you probably know. But let's uh, let's play a little reel of her stuff so you'll know exactly who Debbie Derryberry is. Roll that soon. Holy! Huh? Hi, nice and cheeks. Got a blast. Better stick up for me, or I won't be your girlfriend. Give me that. I'm sad too. Since my brother Dunn did become a rock star, he got too big for his britches, and well, I don't wear none. Nancy got her braces caught in a chain link fence, so Mr. Kanicki wants you to be on the computer club float right now. Tito, you said we could go to dance over your dead body. Did you really mean it? And let's welcome to our show once again, Debbie Derryberry. There she Hi. is. Hi. Great to have you back. How you doing? Um, I'm muted. Am I muted? No, we hear you. Oh, good. I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for having me on your show. That was a nice intro. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Last time you were here, we actually had a small concert. That's right. Yeah. Huh? We did. And and today I have my guitar, but I didn't prepare no music. No, don't no, we don't have to. We don't have to talk about music tonight. We're gonna okay. talk about voiceover. Yeah, but, I need to help everybody. Yeah. But uh in, in the interim, since the last time you were here, you got married though, didn't you? I guess so. Has it been that long? I've been married for a year and a half. So it was Holy more cow. than a year and a half ago that we did the concert here. For the third time. Jesus. <laughs> Well, mazel tov to you on that. And uh, so, has has how has COVID affected 
you, you're your business because I know you're really busy. So I'm going to assume that it it's probably hasn't even had any effect at all. Well, I um, I feel bad saying this because I uh, my heart hurts for people that have been affected so poorly by COVID. But because voiceover can be done virtually from the booth, you can see my booth right back there that you helped me build, boys. Um, I work at home and my business has never been busier. I am able to go from session to session with no uh, travel time. And because everything is auditioned from home, I can audition a lot more. And because I don't have students here, I have students virtually. So my business has been very busy and I love it. I've always loved it and I still always love it. It's good. Do you yeah. think that because you already were like, studio in place production and equipment in place do you think that had a little bit to do with it that you were like when as soon as the phone rang you're like i'm ready to go or is, is it just because you've been hustling for so long um both i both, think yeah i've had my home booth for i don't know seven or eight years now but it wasn't until the last two years that i made it really airtight and that was before I heard about the virus. So it just happened to coincide. Had it not coincided, I would have figured out some way to get the booth up and running to make it as tight as it is. Um, I think yeah. the timing just kind of all fell into place. But starting about 10 years ago, I guess, we started you know, auditioning from home a little more, a little more. And it was really hard for me to um, agree with myself that I was going to have to learn how to do all this. I mean, mm. When Dan came over and said, "You maybe you ought to try Adobe Audition, because I couldn't multi-track on Twisted Wave or Sound Studio. And a lot of my auditions come from, you know, Disney kids shows, Nick kids shows, where they send you the track and you got to karaoke it. And uh, so I had to be able to, so between Dan and Carson back and you, and I said, I got to learn this. So I did. And every day I learned something new and I'm really trying to stay open to it. It's sort of like, you know, when you get a new device, it gives you anxiety because you have to learn all the new features. And that's how it is, you know, with home sound studios and recording but yeah. you just have to take your anti-anxiety me medicines and step up. Yeah, really. It's sort of, well, it's really, I think for a lot of people, uh, the anxiety is sort of like being afraid to jump into a cold pool. And, but once you're in there, you get used to it and, and then, then you're fine. And then, you know, you know, which way to swim and, you know, where the outlet yeah. is and stuff like that. Anyway, so you've been really busy. What have you been working on, uh, you know, series-wise and stuff? Because apparently you're all over the place now. <laughs> well, we've just finished, uh, which you won't see till th later this year, uh, season five of F is for Family, the Bill Burr uh, irreverent and raunchy cartoon, which I do like seven voices on. And I'm so lucky I get to do so many voices. You saw a few of them on the opening clip. Super fun. Um, finished season two of Tig Town, which is a titmouse show over at Adult Swim. And I play Helpy, this sort of androgynous monster purple thing that regenerates yeah. his limbs. And he's help he's Tig Town's sidekick. So I'm the co-star on that and it's a super uh different show, sort of like a roll doll meets Game of Thrones. Okay. Very, very interesting. Um, and uh, Guild Wars 2 is still going strong. Um, and I have a couple other projects that I'd really love to share with you, but I can't. Yeah. So I'm just NDAs, you know, non-disclosure agreement for those of you who don't know what they are. When you get a project that's really cool, they make you sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, that you will not talk about it. And... So I can't talk about it. But so that I've could been, be an animation series or it could be a game. I mean, uh, it could be there, a commercial too. commercials too. Really? Okay. Yeah. Like say you're doing a campaign that won't be released for another couple months for Apple phone or for Audi that has a new oh, right. gadget coming out and they of don't course, want anyone to know. So um, there's a lot of stuff happening 
and I'm busy all the time. And uh, in addition to the voiceover, you know, I, I try to keep my finger in a lot of different pies. I have the second edition of my voiceover book coming out. Um, I just, I have this other voiceover book. If you guys want to know about what I know about voiceover, it's on Amazon. And um, I just finished new headshots, which as an actor, you know, is the bane of our existence, having to do <laughs> headshots, having to take the picture and, and yeah, you have pay to somebody to Photoshop it and Especially getting out. all those characters to stand still for long enough. Yeah. You really. know, they are squirmy little buggers. <laughs> <laughs> have you, I, I guess one of the problems with, you know, doing all this stuff from home, is any ensemble work being done or has it always been done individually? There is some ensemble work doing, going on. Especially the, when you're doing seven characters. That's yeah. what I <laughs> No, I, um, I did a commercial this week with, um, on Zoom with, uh, you know, a Source Connect going in the background and me recording it for backup. And we, I read against my partner and we recorded it ourselves. So we sent our individual files to the their engineer and let them put it together. And then I did a loop session the other day for a, a well-known cartoon and there were like five of us, I'm still getting a, a, a kickback and echo kickback. Somewhere. Yeah, we all, we are getting a little bit. It's the key is not running the headphones too loud. We're all getting a little uh, bit of a minor headphone bleed. I'll turn my headphones probably down a little bit. Source connect over the years. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Yeah. So um, we are able to do group loop sessions online and it's most challenging, I think, for the engineer who has the uh, the files coming in from everybody and has to line it up. And then I've done a couple singing sessions this month where, well, last month, because we're at the first of the month, where, um, you know, I'll hear the track, I'll sing along with it, and then the producers hear it out of sync, and then the engineers line it up and play it back for the producers, and the producers give comments, and then you come back, do it again, and the producers have to know not to listen to the first time because <laughs> sounds right for me, sounds wrong for them. And then you wait, and the engineer does their thing. So there's a few extra steps. Yep. And there's different um, platforms that we've all learned to work, like um, Session Link Pro or Source Connect or Apple Diddle, IPDTL or the Zoom. You've probably learned more new things in the last year than you probably did the 10 years prior. You're absolutely right, George. I've learned <laughs> so much. And I think if I can learn it, anybody can learn it. Because, come on, I'm not 20. <laughs> well, it's like learning languages. You've Once you've learned <laughs> six or seven, you know, learning two or three more, it gets easier, right? Exactly. I, I, I think so. Um, <laughs> the other do. thing I've been uh, – I, I meant to mention this. I've been busy with – um, my son told me that I'm nobody if I don't get on TikTok. So I got on TikTok last year and started making videos. And I guess he knows what he's doing. Um, I've got 800,000 followers and 16 million views. So go figure. Yeah. My, yeah. My son went on TikTok and he did one video and had over a million hits. And then a bunch of people were copying what he was doing. But I've been watching some of those videos and they're cute and they're, you know, it gets you out in front of everybody. L let me ask you this. How do you stay on top of your game? I mean, clearly, you know, you're at the, the top echelon of, of the animation business. How do you keep yourself there? I mean, we know the effort and the time and the training and the, you know, the auditioning and all those things that go competition. into competition. Yeah, the competition, you know, which we can talk about a little bit later. How do you stay there? What What's the real, what do you think your key to success is and say some of your, your other colleagues? Um, first of all, I have to uh, digest that you're saying I'm at the top of the game because to me, I feel like I am competing and working and auditioning for everything just like everybody else is. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm at the top of my game, but I'm hearing you say that and I want to address that as if I was, but I want people to know it's never a cakewalk. I don't live in luxury. I work really hard. I had to audition. There's a, a show coming up that I did 20 years ago that everybody had to audition for 
my part. I had to audition again for my part. <laughs> and it was very hard emotionally for me, but I get it. That's kind of the way the biz works. And I don't book a high percentage. You know, the people, uh, some of my students have this flavor of the month, this, um, the uh, vocal fry millennial voice that's out there yeah. right now. Vocal you know fry. what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. I'm going to Pizza Hut and uh, like I can put it on, but it's not my nature. Right. So those are the ones that are booking and, you know, they may be booking 15% of their stuff. Currently, I'm booking about one out of every 150, 200 auditions. Wow. I work, a, I work hard. It's a lot of time in my booth. But the things that like, say you just book one thing, say I just booked an F is for family. That's seven years for me. Right. It's a long time. Plus, it's a lifetime of residuals. So it's. I mean, um, I meant to ask you. So you have seven seven roles. Yes. Did you audition for seven roles, or did you no. audition for more? Or did you audition to one, and then once they got you, they're like, "Oh, we got ideas because you could do." How did that work? I auditioned for one, and then the callback was they knew they wanted you to be able to be versatile, so they threw things at me at the callback that I hadn't mm. seen before. But as you guys know, part of VO is being able to look at a piece of copy, see that character, dive into your uh, roster of voices, your your wheelhouse and say, oh, that one's a little kid in diapers. He looks like he's from the South. Um, maybe a combination of Southern and the character from Bobby's world. And then comes Candy and gave him a cold on top of it. So, um, you're like a girl this, in Queen's Gambit, what, visualizing the chessboard on the ceiling. So, yeah, that really. yeah. you're picking out all the different parts of the combined to, to find your characters immediately. But I've been doing this so long that I have a pretty easy hold on those characters. So, getting back to your question, in the callback, they'd say, Okay, let's just try this character. And they had told me briefly in the waiting room, in the green room, to prepare for those. So, I did my best. But I think what they're looking for is being able to switch from one character to the next with commitment and believability and being able to call on you for that right. during a session. I mean, not that I always jump from voice to voice. I'll run through the script with one character, then I'll go back to the beginning. You know, only a few people like Rob Paulson, of course he can do that because he's the wizard of all geniuses of all voiceover that ever was. Supernatural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it must be much easier to keep track of what you're doing with the character when you get to read through all of that character's lines yeah. and then come back. So I, I was hoping I answered your question on what yeah. keeps me on top of the game is um, I, I'm always doing something. I mean, I do a lot of podcasts. I teach. I yeah. really try to pay attention when I'm auditioning. Sometimes it's a heavy audition. I will ask my agent for feedback. If I've worked this hard on it, I think I have earned the right to ask my agent for feedback. Not all the time. Mm. I still mm. coach. I coach with Dave Walsh, uh, Allison Packard. I coach with people if I feel like I'm not hitting it, you know, if I'm not in the pocket. And I know I'm not vocal fry millennial, but... I can do some other voices. <laughs> um, you know, we, we just keep trying and I like it. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about your coaching for a second. You know, yeah. I, as long as I've known you, you've been coaching people in animation voicing, including me and, and a bunch of people I know. It seems like an obvious question, but how does animation work differ technically from commercial and long format stuff? Script wise animation differs because um, I ask actors, and I do this myself, to stray from the script a little. In commercial, because you're married to a time, 30 second, 15 second, 10 second, and those words have had to pass so many levels, like say it's a McDonald's spot. Do you know how many people have had to approve that copy? You can't mess with it. But in animation, you really can't mess with the story or the copy, but it is acting and it's all acting. But when you're on stage, there's 
a line, but there's all this mugging and facial stuff that happens. Like, say I'm on stage. Dan, what are you doing? You know, so the line is, Dan, what are you doing? But there's so much can happen with stage work and face work. We don't get that with animation. So I ask my actors to fill it to fill all that face stuff with noise, to give the animator something to do. And I call it pre-life and mid-life and post-life, which is a little before the line, a little in the middle, and a little after. And and I'm always looking for the shift in animation, where the happy meets the sad, where the loud meets the quiet, where the anxious meets the relaxed. Those sorts of things you have to study and work at yeah, so, I, yeah that, that's one of the things, you know, when I, I talk to a lot of people, you know, we're helping them with their studios and they're just getting, you know, beginning. A lot of times I'll say, you know, I do a lot of funny voices. And it's like, and your point, um, you know, it's it's not about that, is it? I mean, it, I mean, we can all do funny voices, but it's there's more to it than that. As you were explaining, it's yeah. acting. It's very little about I mean, I. I can't, you know how many times the emails come in. People say I have a good voice. Yeah. <laughs> well, super great, but that's really has nothing to do with the voiceover. It yeah. has to do with acting and your um, ability to handle the business of the acting, which is so much work. <clears throat> and it's um, studying the craft in all the different genres it's different for promo than it is for narration, than it is for commercial, than it is for VO or, or um, mocap or video games. They all have their specific skills. And I can say that I feel very competent in animation, commercial, mocap, video games. Mm -hmm. Promo is not my animal. I don't do it. I don't really, I don't do narration. There's things I don't do. But the things that I do do, I I said do do. I, <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> try to study and learn from people who are more successful than me in that. And I think that's key too in anything. You want to surround yourself with the people maybe a step up from you. Not a step up in any way that they're better than you, but maybe they have succeeded or they are where you want to be. Yeah. So in coaching... Um, I forgot the question, but how, how does animation differ from other stuff? Thank you. You, um, you, you gave me the right answer. Oh, sorry, that's EG. I have to turn <laughs> of great people around you. <laughs> My best friend is EG Daly, and she was calling me, and she has a special duck duck uh, ring ring. Um, so well, let me one just way. Tell people, you know, if you're just wondering who we're talking to, we're talking with Debbie Derry Barry, one of the uh, top animation voices. If you have a question for her, throw it in the Facebook chat room or in the chat room in, in uh, where are some of the other places they can throw this, Georgia? You know, YouTube or Facebook chat. Both yeah. of them show yeah. up in our feed. So, yeah. So if you've got a question for Debbie, throw it in there. And Jeff Holman, who's getting far more publicity than he deserves, will be putting it into our chat room. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just finish answering your last question. Differences yeah. between animation and commercial. Um, in animation, I think, I mean, in commercial, sometimes you're auditioning for campaigns. In commercial, in animation, you're auditioning for a character in a part that you're hoping will recur and recur. Um, and you usually have to pick a character, stay in that character and go through all different emotions in that character. I think in commercial, you kind of stay in, an, in one area and it's a different um, level of emotion. In, in animation, there tends to be more highs and lows. I tell people if they're you know, looking for microphones, what do you do mostly? You know, If you are mostly commercial, go on with your Neumann and your Sennheiser or your Scarlet. Um, but for me, I got to have an Apollo twin if I'm going to be doing animation. Otherwise, it's fallen off either side of the chart because there's so much variation in the uh, levels. Right. George is like, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, 
it's it's not so much the equipment it's knowing how to use it but and that's you know what you've been talking about is like i had to learn how to use this and i had to learn how to use that well since you brought it up okay the Ooh. apollo twins so so this is a this is a big thing so with voice actors doing animation and character work i tell them you know set the gain at the point where you need yeah. to capture the point in the script where the character really kind of goes nuts, right? The loudest point in the script, set your gain for that and then leave it there. Right. But you're finding that you're using the Apollo twin as a way to control that dynamic range. And you're doing that for the actual gigs as well, or just as a means to make the auditioning process easier. Both. I find that when I've used the Scarlet, um, it, and I don't know if the Apollo twin, again, you're the guru on the equipment, but the when I go through the Apollo, it tends to keep it in the lines. If I ran the same levels, the same thing through the Scarlet, it'll fly off the chart easier. Um, I mean, of course, I uh, apply my stack afterwards mm -hmm. with my isosomes, isotope, isotope. Are the isotope. Yay, isotope! Um, <laughs> And I guess you could do that with the Scarlet too. I'm not bad mouthing the Scarlet. It's a great piece of equipment. Well, it's it's a simple device, yeah. right? It just takes your mic and increases the level and pipes it into the computer where the Apollo has way more going on underneath the hood. Yeah, so you tell me why it keeps it within range with the Apollo. Well, it, did you have other things in the Apollo chain, quote unquote, a unison plug-in preamp or any other bells and whistles or is it just, are you just using it as a preamp? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. Somebody said something on it and it's, and it's staying that way. Bottom line is it's working for you. Yeah. Right. And you broke, don't now, there was a problem when we first started doing virtual, when you were on source connect and zoom and Apollo twin, there was this horrible bug that happened and mm -hmm. you couldn't get rid of the feedback the the talk back and i don't know how they figured out what to do but you can't just go mute on zoom you have to leave audio which sounds like it does the same thing but for some reason it wasn't doing the same thing zoom and uh, the apollo have some uh, yeah there, there's a lot of weird things that happen between those two yeah. things so that's curious to hear that so yeah. And I don't dare upgrade to the new iOS yet until they get the new UA stuff all. Yeah, there is no hurry to go upgrade to Big Sur for quite some time. Yeah, especially <laughs> since the road just broke. Oh, That's yeah. not a joke. Yeah, you're Big not, Sur 101. Big oh, the Big Sur the road. road the <laughs> <laughs> ha ha, that was like a double entendre. Oh, good oh, one, George. Good. good, all right. Good one. Yeah. So, you know, there, there are, it seems there's a talented few who've always dominated the animation industry at different times. You know, Mel Blanc, Dawes Butler. In more, you know, more recent times, we mentioned Rob Paulson, Tara Strong, E.G., yourself. Hey, but I maybe we need to be some encouraging here. Have you seen an influx of really great new talent getting breaks? Um, I've seen an influx of talent there are still the select few that i listen to and go wow they really have it they can jump around those people are versatile there's a lot of people doing it and there are people who know the people who wrote the shows there are on-camera celebrities who want to be in vo so there's a lot of people doing vo but as far as us rank and file everyday vo animationers we're the ones that can jump around and step up to every single task and bring them what they want and give them that versatility because, you know, the animation contract, they get you for two voices and it's only a 10% bump for the third. So it behooves them mm -hmm. to hire someone who can bring them a few different voices. And then in the streaming mm -hmm. contracts, they don't, it, it doesn't matter. They use you for as many voices as they want, AKA F is for a family. And it's just the one rate, but that's fun for me. So I don't know. I, I would like to say I, I see the cream at the top spreading, you know, 
out over the world, but it's it's still kind of a smallish group. Although, like I said, since on camera is a bit down, our agents are just flooded with on camera people who want to do VO and it, as you know, looks easy, but there's a lot to learn. And sometimes the producers don't want to wait on that learning curve. They're just like, give me the people who can give it to me now. Or they'll be calling me saying, Deb, who else do you know that can do this? Well, it's it's easy when you're a celebrity that just happens to sound like a zebra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, you are, George. Yeah. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. If uh, if you're just joining us, once again, we're talking with Debbie Derryberry. We still have room for some questions in our chat room, so throw them in there. We're going to take a quick break, and we will continue this conversation with her right after these messages. Don't go away. Yep, this is VOBS, proven anybody. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough, and the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash Start. Again, that's voheroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. So, for the first time ever, voiceoveressentials.com has created a discount coupon code in honor of February 14th, Valentine's Day, with a store wide discount of 14%. While checking out at voiceoveressentials.com, just enter VOBS14 in the discount code box and your discount will be deducted automatically. You know, nothing says I love you like a colorful LED recording sign or Portabooth Plus or Pro for those romantic trips will all be ticking again before long. One caution, the promotion ends at midnight on February 14th Central Standard Time. So start shopping. Remember, just enter VOBS14 in the discount code box and your discount will be deducted automatically. VoiceOverEssentials.com for all your home voiceover studio needs. Thanks, Harlan. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back here on Voiceover Body Shop. We're talking with Debbie Derryberry, uh, you know, about what it really takes to succeed in our business. And you know, I mean, in, in the time that you know that that I've been doing it, and, and and George has been working on people studios, and and he and George and I have been working on a lot of screen actors studios in the last, uh, you know, in in twenty twenty. That was uh, the mainstay of our business. I got to do voiceover, and uh, there was not a lot of tech savvy there, but. We got a lot of them going, but there's so many people trying to get into this business right now. And 
how do you succeed? Everyone, what's the magic formula? And I generally say, well, be better than everybody else. But Deb, what is it? You know, it voiceover is really about sticking out from the crowd. How do you get somebody's attention with all of this din with all these other people out there competing? As you were saying, you you know, you've got you know, for every 200, 150 auditions you do, you might get a gig out of that. How do you get yourself to stand out? Well, um, I'm going to answer that. Oops, am I muted? No, you're good. Okay. Uh, I want to answer that, but then I want to go back to the last question, okay. uh, which was, do I? how do you come above the cream of the crop, and, and do I see a lot of new people in voiceover? But um, the question you just asked was, how do you stand out? And what I do is I look at the copy, and I read it the way that I see it the first time. And I give a good read and then I think, all right, that's my starting point. That's what everybody's going to do. So where, how do I become that 1% that they're going to listen to? Because you got to figure their casting director is receiving 10 to 20 auditions per agent. And there's 10 to 15 agents going to be submitting on this. It's a lot of auditions that they have to listen to. How do you rise above? And those tricks on how you take your pretty good audition and make them shine are what I try to coach people and, and what I've written in, in um, I wrote this book, Voiceover 101, How to Succeed as a Voice Actor. It's on Amazon. But the things that make it shine are looking at the line, just a few of the things I do. Look at the line that just happened before you speak. And it, it's acting 101. Your, your fives, your where are you? What just happened? Um, What's your mood that you're in? Why are you saying it? Who are you talking to? And then you take your character. I, I can't see it, you guys. I know she just put me on me. All I see is me. I want to see you too. Um, but I know you have this so that everybody can see me, right? There. Yeah. Okay. So um, I felt alone. <laughs> no, we're here. We're just listening. We're focused so, on you. Yeah. So I look at that okay audition and I ask myself those questions and I say, okay, if what just happened was somebody just hit me in the head with a cream puff. Well, if the line is, Hey, what are you doing? The line then becomes, Oh, Hey, what are you doing? So maybe the line says you're angry about it. Okay. So then the line becomes impact and you have to know how to write impact or ug or oof. And it's, Hey, what are you doing? So that line changes based on everything that happened around it. Well, a lot of the auditions today don't have the whole script or the scene. You have to kind of figure out what's happening. Hmm. And they'll have five lines that are extracted from a script and you have no idea what's going on. So you make it up. You create your little backstory. And then I do that read the best I can for my take one. And if I feel like I have something really different to bring to the game, you know, just simple, uh, maybe throw in a Southern accent or maybe the person drops their awes when they talk. So that becomes take two. So I try to give them s something different than I think everybody else is going to give and then give a complete contrast to it in a take two. But I only do a take two in an animation if it's really different because mm. they're only going to listen to you for about seven to 10 seconds. You know, it might be a five minute audition and you have to do the whole thing, but your, your game has to be at the top of that audition. Mm -hmm. oh, and then, yeah, and then wait, there's more. But wait, then there's more. <laughs> you see who's casting this. Oh, I know that casting person. Or maybe I don't know them. Quick, go friend them on Facebook. Go look on LinkedIn, see what else they're looking at. Oh, this person happened to do this movie. Let me go watch that movie, see what the tone of that movie is. What do they like? Is it an adult swim? Oh, I can curse, okay. Is it preschool? Oh, the pace goes down, slows down. So there's a lot to consider when you're doing an animated animation audition. And I've just given you a few things, but there's a lot. 
yeah, you gotta you gotta think about it. I, I think there's a lot of people just they go through the motions because they're doing audition after audition after audition. Make each one special and and really you know consider what it is that you're doing and that you want to stick out. Uh, we got a question from JV Martin, one of our fine supporters and good friends. Uh, you want to take that one, George? Sure. Um, JV says your intense work schedule and quirky characters, no doubt, make big demands on your voice. He says, I love lemon water and Grether's pastilles, or maybe it's Grether's pastilles, to, to keep my voice and vocal cords from burning out. What do you swear by? How do you keep your voice going? Um, those two things are so good. Um, when I do lemon and water, I... I'm always thinking, oh, it's taking all the enamel off my teeth. So <laughs> I have to limit that one. Plus the citrus tears up my stomach a little, add a little honey and make it warm. So that helps. Um, certainly the Grother's Pastilles. I try not to drink, eat sugar, su sugar substitutes. I try to eat just sugar, but not a lot of it. So the one, the Grother's that I eat are expensive and sweet. You know, it's 40 bucks for your thing at Grother's Pastilles, but mm. they work fine. Um, I think more than anything, it's rest and water and not cold water and, you know, not abusing it the night before with screaming. I, I do notice when I have some, you know, healthy jobs the day before, or some challenging throat shredding things the day before or a long video game session, I feel it the next day. So vocal rest and water. I don't really think there's any magic cure. You can take the pain away. There's all kinds of products people are happy to sell you. But water's free. Lemons aren't too expensive. I got and a whole rest of is free. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, if you take the pain away, yeah. that's that can be really dangerous, right? Because yes, it you is. can continue on damaging your voice and just well, I I dulled the pain. Right. So you want to pay attention to the pain. They say no pain, no gain, but I don't think that really holds true in VO. If it hurts, you better stop. And that's another thing in animation. People immediately get excited and pinched. And so mm -hmm. when they go into their animation voice, it automatically goes here. And that's a pinchy thing. And they also can go gravelly, you know, if they think it's an old lady or a monster, then they do this thing. Well, you can't do that for four hours, so you can't make that a voice. So I work with people on how to create that without the damage and the pain that happens with the, the throat shredding. Right. That's awesome. I love that the lead singer of Foo Fighters a long time ago, he talked about how he had to relearn how to sing because this thing is basically screaming. Mm -hmm. David Grohl, right? And he's like, I found out I couldn't do that <laughs> and keep having a career. So I had to learn how to get the same sound without using the same muscles or the same th technique. Yeah. Which, you know, it's a very interesting thing. It reminded me of that. Yeah. Yeah. You have to relearn a lot of stuff. And I give people exercises and I see where they're really weak. It's like if I ask them to do the letter O in the sinus above their eyeballs, which is, Oh, oh, and they go, oh, and they can't get here. Oh, or maybe they can go E, but they can't go oh up there. And it's a lot of practice to keep everything alive and working. It really is like an instrument. I mean, my daughter's trying to learn clarinet right now, and she's only learning the first five notes, right? Right mm -hmm. in the middle of the instrument. Mm -hmm. She still has to learn how to play the notes and the keys above those. Yeah. And all the keys below those. And, you know, it takes time to learn all those different parts of the instrument. Yeah, fine tuning. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Chris, question from Chris Reburn. Uh, or he says, uh, Debbie, how did you start out? <laughs> the basics. At the very beginning is, is a good place to start. Oh, Julie Andrews. Um, I was a pre-med at UCLA. And I uh, played guitar all the time in the stairwell. I wrote songs. I moved to Nashville to become a country singer. The only thing I got hired for was singing like a baby. And um, I tell this story every time, but I was doing stand-in work for a 12-year-old boy on the set of Hey, Ernest Goes to Camp. And Scotty Manville's mama said, hey, Debbie, you should do voice work. And I'm like, what is that? I didn't even know. 
And uh, so I ended up making a, a little cassette of some commercials with my on-camera agent because I did elves and stand-in work and um, sent it to Ginny McSwain and a bunch of other people in L.A. <clears throat> and Ginny said, good demo, but you need to be back in Los Angeles to do this. So I moved back and she walked me into ICM with Jeff Danis that became DPN. And I started working right away. And that kind of, there's a lot more in there that I left out. But pretty much that's how it happened. I didn't plan it. I knew I could, I knew my voice was silly because I'd turn around and see people going, and I just talked like that normally, but <laughs> and so, I've been acting my whole life on stage since I've been eight years old, doing this and that just for fun. I never meant to do it for a living. I never meant to do this for a living. <laughs> just when you thought you were out, they dragged you back in. Uh, you want to get the question from Tony Hoover there, George? Uh, Tony says, I've never spent a great deal of time imitating cartoon characters or creating original character voices. So is animation a bad career choice for me? Well, that's loaded. Yeah, um, really. <laughs> um, I don't know where your voice falls or what your acting abilities are. Um, so I, I can't answer that question. It's it's a whole yeah. it's a whole roadmap, and everybody's roadmap is different. And yeah. I can't say that. You know, if you create your own show sign up with SAG as a new media show and make yourself the star, boom, you're starring in an animated show. So there's lots of ways in. Um, it's hard to answer these individual particular questions on such a yeah. broad platform. Yeah. But I don't want to tell anybody they can never do it. And I just want to go back to that question that we did before the break. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You were asking why does certain people rise to the top and is there room for more people? Yeah, yeah. There is room for more people. And yes, I do see new people all the time. And I see amazing groups that that bring people into the business. You know, like Tim Freelander, his group, and you guys. And you you help people, you handhold them into the business. It's it's not cheap, it's not easy, and it it's a lot of work, but I see new people all the time that I'm impressed by. So I didn't yeah. want to sound so callous, you know, that, that, that it's closed because it's not. Well, if, if if you really want it and you know it's your thing, then you go yeah. for it. And, and I mean, we're still here. Me, E.G., Tara, Rob, we're still all working. So you still have to compete, compete against us. So I tell people, go on agents' websites. Listen to the demos there. That's what you have to be as good as or better. No question about it. Um, Jim McNicholas asks, Debbie, do you still have to market yourself or do you have a manager that does that? I've never had a manager. I do have people that help me in areas that I don't have time for, that I haven't learned. Um, so I still have to market myself, but I do have people that will help me do certain things. Um, nobody help. I did have someone help me write my book, which helps in the marketing. I hired a photographer to take my picture and, you know, had to get all my cartoon characters and have somebody put it all together because I don't do Photoshop. You know, as in anything, we uh, will gather our team of people to pick up the pieces that we can't do ourselves. You know, I've never been good at making Indian food, so I buy that. And the same with voiceover. I think you gather your team. You're being a CEO. You have to be a mini, you have to be a CEO of your career. Yes, you do. And hire the right people. All right. There's many legs to the stool in a, in a voiceover career. And you got to be, you got to have each one of those legs. If you don't have one of them, there's somebody who does. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all pretty accessible. Yeah. I can't make anybody famous. I can't make anybody a great voice artist. I can offer what I have to offer, but everybody's journey is different and persistence and hard work come out on top no matter what business you're in absolutely Indeed. got one more question here another one from jv martin who deserves an extra question tonight he knows why 
Uh, Debbie, you, if you're a perf if you're performing a conversation between two or more of your characters, do you prefer to have that conversation in real time? Or record each character's line separately if you had that choice. And any funny stories about that kind of challenge? Because I know for a fact my son Jacob had to do that, and he's like, "I got to hear the other lines when I'm, you know, when I'm auditioning or when I'm when I'm recording it." For table reads, which are the rehearsals we do before a record, I'll jump between characters so we can keep it in real time. <clears throat> but for the sake of moving smoothly through the record session, I'll generally just take one character all the way through to the end. If I need a read in, which as an actor, I sometimes want it, but I don't always need it. I'll ask the director to just read me into that line. <clears throat> or if it's already been recorded and that particular artist vamped a lot, um, improved a lot, the engineer will pay, play me back what that person did so that I can work off that. If we're, uh, and that that's holds true whether I'm virtual or in in the less studio live. All right. Well, Deb, thanks so much for joining us tonight. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and especially in person, which eventually we'll get to do again someday. Uh, if people want to, uh, you know, get a hold of your books or want to talk to you about having private coaching or your classes, where would they go to find that out and get access to that? Um, and I'm sure Susan can type it in there somewhere, but it's um, uh, www.debbiederryberry.com. And the spelling is, a, you know, a little unusual. It's This is the spelling, debbiederryberry.com. And um, you can contact me at the website, um, on Insta, Messenger, and my Facebook, uh, Debbie Derryberry's World. Um, be sure to follow me on TikTok. It's at Debbie Derryberry. At Insta is at Debbie Derryberry. Twitter is at Debbie Derryberry. Um, I usually try to get back with everybody who has a question. If you want to book with me, you can do that from the website. Um, just so you know, it doesn't have the rate on there, but I'm I'm not cheap. Um, but I want people really serious, and you know there is time in my schedule to help people. So reach out, uh, get my book on Amazon. I just lowered the price and put it on sale for everybody. Uh, I lowered it from 1995 to 1495 and you can get it through Amazon. Wow. Well, Killer thanks deal. for being with us. And I look forward to seeing you again in person. No, so good to see both of you. Um, I miss you. Good to see you. All righty. Debbie Derryberry. Okay. We'll be right back. And George and I will wrap things up right after these messages. Don't go away. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about our sponsor, Source Elements. And they're the creators of Source Connect and a whole slew of other tools that are used for bringing in voices, sharing audio between studios, remote recording sessions, and collaborating on jobs uh, and voice work and music and post. Everything, you could, everything that you could do remotely, they have tools for making that possible and hopefully making it easier too. Um, the one that most voice actors should have in their toolbox if they are really starting to gun for the big jobs, 
the things that agents typically will send you out on uh, commercials and some of the television stuff that goes to television, things that are produced in Hollywood, et cetera, you really probably want to have Source Connect at the ready. Um, what you want to do is just go get a demo at the very least, get a demo of it, go to source-elements.com and you can get your 15 day trial once you've set up your iLock account and have it ready to go. And that way, once you have it running and you've learned how to operate it and get it all set up, you can tell your agent, Hey, I'm ready to go. Just let me know. And I can activate my license and be ready to rock and roll. You can have a license. That's a buyout license. So you own it forever or you can do a subscription. So go check it out. Go to source-elements.com and get your Source Connect license running so you can tell your agents and your clients, I'm ready to take on those big gigs. That's it's time to do it. All right, we'll be right back to wrap up the show right after this. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. And we're back here at Voice of Her Body Shop. Always a pleasure to have Debbie on here. Next time we'll we'll get her to play again. We'll, we, we had that great backyard concert last time, and that was that was a lot of fun. Um, next week on this very program, you will see Tech Talk number fifty. Yeah, baby, the big and five zero. We, we got lots of stuff to talk about with that. So uh, if you're watching live, stay tuned for that. Uh, you know, if you're not, then watch it next week. It'll be on Facebook and just about everywhere. Um, who are our donors of the week? And there are quite a few of them. Yeah, a lot of great familiar names. Some of them I may still butcher even after reading them 50 times. <laughs> Trey Mosley, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, Sean Daly. Hey, Sean. Uh, Mr. George Widom, my dad, Brian Page. Rob Rader, Patty Givens, Stephanie Sutherland, Diana Birdsall, Antland Productions, Uncle Roy, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, Stephen Chandler, Don Griffith, and Diane Merritt. Yeah. So and those names, a lot of them are familiar because we read them almost every single week because they are subscribers. They they did the donate now button on our website, VOBS.tv. And they chose to just, instead of sending one payment, they subscribed and sent us a little bit each month. And you don't have to send much, and we'll keep reading your name and just at our way of saying thanks for yeah. being a little part of how we keep our show running. Absolutely. And we got to add JV Martin in there. One came in a little later today. Hey, thanks, JV. Yeah, big help there. We really appreciate it. Uh, hey, you know, you can join our mailing list, too. We have a mailing list. And how do they get on the mailing list? You go to our website vobs.tv and it says join our mailing list <laughs> gee that would be easier than that <laughs> and from there you'll get to, you'll you'll see what's going on in our show every week which is uh well is a help it's like well how do i plan my week because i have to plan it around voiceover body shop what do they have this week oh okay very important you gotta you know make sure you, you get your priorities straight uh, we need to thank our sponsors as well. Uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Uh, thanks again to Jeff Holman for holding it together in the chat room tonight. Yeah. Our amazing technical director, sweating it out from somewhere else, but getting it done. Sumerlino, uh, without we could not do this show. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Uh, well, that's going to do it for uh, this week at Voice Over Body Shop. We really appreciate you listening. And uh, George and I love doing this show. We love hearing from you. Write to us at theguys at vobs.tv, uh, especially if you have a question for us, a technical question. Uh, people have been sending in, like, I got a problem with my audio. And it's like, well, we really need to hear it. Uh, which is something we could talk about on Tech Talk. Um, so tune in every week. We're right here. and uh, But we've come to the conclusion that when it comes to your home voiceover studio, if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B-S-S. B-S. <laughs> All right, we're going to rewrite it. See you next time.